Well, um, you did tell me off because I actually was in learning mode uh, with Terry's session there. So I hope that they're being recorded because I'd like to go back and, and take a look. Um, but yeah, so, well, thank you for joining me. This is a snack sized session. So we're going to take a little look at the dimensional model, which is a data warehouse construct uh, in the context of serverless SQL pools. So if I just uh, flick to the about me, so I'm sort of an independent uh, consultant and contractor. I work predominantly with the Azure data platform. If you scan the QR code, then that'll take you to my Twitter. So I have some uh, you know, debates and conversations around uh, around data there. And what we're going to be looking at today, we're going to ask a question. Now you can probably guess what the question is by the rest of the session contents. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail around the Synapse serverless SQL pool, but just enough to provide context for the rest of the session. So we're going to look at the, the dimensional model, how we load dimensions and facts, a little look at incremental loading, how we read that data, and some considerations around the service as well. And as you can see, Data Toboggan uh, absolutely loves Synapse Analytics. So the question is, you know, can I build a data warehouse using the dimensional modeling pattern and use the serverless SQL pool engine in Synapse as the processing engine. Now, why do I want to do that? And I think this is the crux. The first point is really what I want to make clear is that essentially I'd, I'd like to leverage my existing SQL skills. Um, I'm not too much uh, of a Spark developer. Um, my Scala skills uh, are pretty lacking and I know even less Python. So I'd like to leverage my existing SQL knowledge. Uh, I like to think I'm comfortable with the dimensional uh, modeling practice. And I want to use some of that data lake flexibility um, and start exploring that uh, the new uh, a new concept, which is the data lake house uh, that actually um, Simon Whiteley talks about uh, in uh, great depth. And I'd usually use SQL Server, whether it's on-premise or whether it's uh, in the cloud or as your SQL database, it does have features that allow data warehousing. Um, and of course, the dedicated SQL pools. I know we weren't supposed to say SQL Data Warehouse, but we kind of knew it as the SQL Data Warehouse for about four or five years. So I think, uh, I hope, hopefully that's allowed. So what's Synapse? serverless SQL pool. Well, essentially, it's an engine within Synapse Analytics that enables you to read and also write file based data that's in Azure storage in Data Lake Gen 2. It currently supports CSV, Parquet and JSON. And the most important aspect of the service is that its cost model is not based on how long your queries run, or how powerful the service is set at. It's how much data is being processed, how much data is being read and written. And currently, it's around three pound, uh, three pound seventy for one terabyte of data being processed. So if you've got one SQL query and that SQL query reads a terabyte of data, let's say you're doing a group by operation, it's going to cost you three pound seventy. That's the consideration here. Now, no data is actually stored in the serverless. It's all in the data lake. But I do have familiar SQL objects. I can create a database. I can use SQL to write data transformations. I have some inline functions and also store procedures. So some familiar SQL constructs there. Now, the dimensional model is a data warehouse pattern that's existed for, for many years where we're essentially looking to divide our data into two basic types. Our dimensions, which is our reference data, it's our labels, it's how we want to measure things, and our facts, which is a measurement of a business process. I've used the example of sales here, but it could be customer activity. It's also known as the star schema, a very popular, a very popular term. Now, Setting up the Synapse environment 
what I need to do is I can create a database in the serverless SQL pool. I can create schemas to logically separate my objects. And I created some credentials so that the service can access the data lake. I'm going to create a data source which points to the location in the data lake where my data is stored and my file formats. I'm creating two file formats here. One is Parquet, which is a columnar file format to store the data, but that also stores some schema information and some stats. Very useful for, for, for big data workloads. And a CSV format because that's my source data. I'm reading from CSV. Now, when I'm creating objects, created external tables, which essentially means the data is stored in the data lake. It's not stored in serverless. There's my location. There's my data source and my file format. And it then enables me to query the data stored in the data lake using a select query against that table. When I'm loading the dimensions, I'm going to use SQL. I'm going to use constructs that I know and understand a row number to generate a surrogate key. I'm going to select the data from the data lake, but I'm going to use a CTAS statement. I'm going to create an external table. And what that means is it's going to take the results of that SQL statement and it's going to write it back to the data lake in my chosen format, which is the, the Parquet format. And essentially what we can see there, we can see the folder structure and the Parquet file being created. And it's the same process with the facts, except this time I've got the dimension there that I can use to look up that surrogate key. And I've also got uh, my location, which I can parameterize. I'll show you on the incremental. Now, what I'm doing is I'm creating the external table in a folder structure. OK, so that's the most important bit. So what I end up with, if I run that statement multiple times for multiple dates, I'm going to get a folder structure of my days in there. When I look at incremental loading, what I'm really doing is I'm parameterizing that location and the date so I can execute the store procedure in SQL serverless, write that data out almost like a partition into my folder structure. Now, when I'm reading the dimensional data, I can select from that root folder and I get all of the data that's available to me. I can also use the file path function in which I want to eliminate the folders that I don't want to read data from. So if you've got a, uh, a, 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 a BI tool or something further down the line that you're incrementally loading data from, then this eliminates unwanted folders. Now when we come on to considerations, the important thing is the cost model is based around the amount of data processed. So when you're doing your budgeting, when you're doing your cost model, you need to factor that in. The amount of data that you're reading and writing is how much you're being charged. Um, currently, there's no caching of the data retrieved. So, for example, if you were going to uh, use the same dimension uh, multiple times, you're going to read from storage multiple times. And currently the data is immutable. It can't be changed. It can't be updated. So you need to factor that in when you're writing your data out. OK, so if you scan, then that will take you um, to the references uh, of further reading and also the PDF of the of the slides will be available. And I think that about wraps it up and it's under 10 minutes. I told you I could do it, Mark. I hope you've uh, I hope it's been useful. Um, please reach out on Twitter. Let's carry on the conversation there. That's amazing. Thank you very much for presenting. Thank you.